Genetic biocontrol is a type of biological control that uses genetic variants or genetically modified forms of a pest or target organism as the controlling agent. There is a constellation of genetic biocontrol technologies whose characteristics vary considerably with respect to their planned persistence and spread within the environment following their introduction. Some genetic biocontrol technologies have use characteristics that parallel insecticides in that they remain in the environment for short times and need to be reapplied regularly to sustain their control effects. Technologies such as the sterile insect technique and the incompatible insect technique are two examples. At the other end of the spectrum of persistence and spread potential are gene drives, and these are the focus of this short video. The objective is to go beyond the simple explanation of the concept of gene drive in order to gain a more nuanced understanding of the phenomena. Nuances that can be useful in thinking more broadly and deeply about the technologies and the pros and cons associated with them. Gene drive refers to the preferential transmission of an allele or chromosome to the next generation. This is simply illustrated here where the inheritance of the black allele of a gene shows no evidence of drive in the situation on the left, but does show evidence of drive in the example on the right. In the example on the right, the black allele is preferentially transmitted to the next generation. The black allele is driving and displays gene drive. Note that for our purposes here, let's assume that what we are looking at are representative outcomes of the illustrated genetic crosses after being repeated many times. The outcome of one genetic cross with only four offspring alone would not provide sufficient data to make a conclusion regarding drive one way or the other. In this video, we'll learn about two strategies by which transmission advantages can be achieved and that are being used for creating transgenes that display gene drive. We will look more closely at drive in order to introduce the concept of weak and strong drive. We will consider a driving allele or transgene in one and then multiple populations and look more closely at the concept of spread. We will also consider the concept of drive thresholds. And finally, we will briefly consider one of the major technical challenges facing those attempting to assemble transgenes with drive characteristics that will persist over time. That challenge is avoiding, delaying, or mitigating the emergence of resistance to drive. How might an allele or transgene gain a transmission advantage? There are three major strategies. We will consider the two most common, overreplication and interference. Recall that sexual reproduction depends on the formation of gametes, sperm and eggs, that each contain half the genetic complement of the organism from which they came. The halving process occurs during a special cell division that leads to four gametes, in this case, sperm. The black allele in this case has no transmission advantage and has the same chance of ending up in a sperm cell as the blue allele. But now consider a black allele that displays drive and achieves that advantage by over-replicating. The black allele can make a copy of itself and the copy is pasted into the position of the blue allele on the opposite chromosome, replacing it. This insertion of the copy into the corresponding position on the other chromosome is called homing. Homing is a special type of over-replication mechanism and is being widely used in the development of engineered gene drive systems. We won't consider here exactly how engineered homing gene drive systems are assembled, but let me just say that an essential element is the gene editing enzyme CAS from CRISPR-Cas systems. One of the reasons CRISPR-Cas gene editing systems are so powerful is their amenability to being directed precisely to specific sequences in genomes. That precision is used in this type of gene drive system because the blue allele needs to be precisely cut 
before the replicated copy of the black allele can be inserted. Now consider the formation of sperm following this replication and insertion process. The black allele has gained a transmission advantage over the blue allele. The black allele displays drive. This is a popular paradigm being used by gene drive developers. Now let's consider the second strategy to achieve a transmission advantage, interference. Again, let's consider the black allele which displays gene drive using an interference strategy. In this case, the black allele expresses a gene product that will interfere with the formation of sperm harboring the blue allele. Now consider the formation of sperm following that gene expression. The black allele's gene product interferes with the formation of sperm containing the blue allele, resulting in only sperm with the black allele. A clear transmission advantage. This strategy is widely used in natural gene drive systems, but has been challenging to recreate or mimic in the laboratory. Nonetheless, there is an example in mosquitoes in which the black allele, an engineered gene drive system, is on the Y male determining chromosome and its gene product specifically damages the X chromosome during this cell division process, so that males with the engineered gene drive only produce Y-bearing sperm, which will result only in male offspring. The performance of gene drive systems varies, and performance can be expressed in several ways. One way is by referring to the strength or efficiency of the drive. In the case where the transmission advantage of the black allele is maximal, that is, it is transmitted to all of the offspring and no offspring inherit the blue allele, this is referred to as a strong drive or an efficient drive. But in this case, the black allele also has a transmission advantage. Without drive, the chance of inheriting the black allele would be 50%. In this case, it's about 60%, a weak drive. So we can assess gene drive in terms of strength or efficiency, ranging from low to high, weak to strong. Transmission advantage of an allele can have interesting consequences in populations. If one were to introduce insects with a non-driving allele into a population, population genetic theory tells us that we would not expect the frequency of that allele to change over time after making some specific assumptions. On the other hand, and under the same set of assumptions, a driving allele is predicted to increase in frequency within that population. This is usually referred to as spreading. It is this property that makes gene drive technologies potentially useful. Note that how fast the frequency changes, how rapidly the allele spreads, will be a function of how strong the gene drive system is, as well as other factors. There will also be characteristics of drive systems that determine how many or few drive-containing organisms need to be introduced for it to successfully spread through a population. This is referred to as the drive threshold, and depending on the specific system and how it was designed, the threshold may be very low, requiring just a few drive-containing organisms to initiate the process, or high, requiring many drive-containing organisms. We can extend our thinking about spreading by thinking about multiple populations of the species of interest that are connected in some way and interbreed. Strong, low-threshold drive systems under some conditions are predicted to spread through all of the connected interbreeding populations after some period of time. Whether remote populations will acquire the gene drive will depend on many factors. For example, dispersal characteristics of the organism, distance, geography, and many other things. Being able to forecast the fate of gene drive systems following introduction into populations will be an important capability and will depend very much on mathematical models. This is currently a very active area of research. Finally, I would like to make you aware of at least one technical challenge associated with engineered gene drive systems, particularly those constructed using Cas enzyme. 
from CRISPR-Cas systems. Namely, the possibility that organisms will appear in the population that are resistant to the gene drive. Without going into great detail, engineered homing gene drive systems depend on the Cas protein, an essential component of the drive system. And it depends on the Cas protein interacting with and cleaving the blue allele at a very specific DNA sequence that the developer determines. If there are members of the population harboring natural variants of the target sequence, Cas will be unable to initiate the copy and pasting process. That is the basis of homing gene drive, and those members will be resistant. Also, the Cas protein itself, when it interacts with the blue allele, sometimes can create mutations that result in the blue allele being altered and being resistant to copy and pasting of the black allele. Resistance is potentially an issue because it will prevent the gene drive from spreading completely throughout a population. And depending on the circumstances, this may make the gene drive ineffective. This problem of resistance is a general problem also seen with insecticides. But it's an important technical challenge that must be considered for engineered gene drive systems constructed using Cas enzymes from the CRISPR-Cas system. Cas enzymes provide many opportunities to create a great variety of gene drive systems and is a popular platform used by researchers and developers. Researchers are focused on finding ways to minimize the potential of resistance to develop. In addition, researchers are looking for ways to construct gene drive systems without using Cas enzymes. I hope this short video has provided you with some additional insights into gene drive technologies that will enable you to think critically about these technologies and to engage more substantively in discussions and arguments concerning these technologies. Thank you.